What up, brother? Well, so as I was uh, saying about uh, the first WrestleMania, you know, if it hadn't been the grand success that it, that it was, uh, if it hadn't been so such a groundbreaking thing uh, back in 1985 when I was still a wee little lad, just barely out of my mother's womb. No, actually, I would have been about two and a half at that point, playing on, uh, shit, I don't know, crawling around the, the old house I grew up in. But anyway, um, if it hadn't have been a great success, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about uh, WrestleMania today. So that's why I, I got, you know, that in addition, I mean, I really feel like people that, that don't recognize the value of that first WrestleMania, they just think, well, it's the one that got it started. Go back and watch it. I mean, it really is a solid show. The booking's great. The talent roster at that point was deep. Um, I mean, really a lot better WrestleMania than what people give it credit for. The fact that it was two hours does not bother me because I'd rather watch a two-hour show that keeps me thoroughly entertained uh, rather than, you know, the shit that we tend to see today. Uh, like the three hour rolls that you know you're channel surfing during and uh, uh, multitasking during because you know about half of it maybe if that uh, even it is entertaining and, and keeps your attention um, so my favorite wrestling of all time and I, I've mentioned it before but I really feel it's head and shoulders the the best and the most influential. That would be WrestleMania three, where the unstoppable force meant the immovable object. Um, is that what Gorilla Monsoon is is saying? But anyhow, uh, or was it irresist is it irresistible? Objects, are, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure. But Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. I mean, let's get real, folks. 93,000 fans, or even if that number has been fudged a little bit, um, it set a North American uh, attendance record for an indoor sporting event. There's nothing, been nothing like it since. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, I mean, this Hulk Hogan and Honor the Giant thing, they were really the two most um, known wrestlers of their time. I won't say necessarily the most popular. Andre obviously was a big draw wherever he went because uh, he was such a giant and he was such a attraction. Uh, he was starting, from what I understand, to be on the... Uh, his back was hurt and bothering him, you know, going into WrestleMania three. So his health was already kind of headed downhill um, at at this point due to uh, giganticism um, and the, uh, the disease he had that uh, you know caused him to keep uh, growing. And um, I just read part of an article today on CBS Sports and talked about how they had to pump a bunch of fluid out from around his heart in the early '80s because. Um, he had serious health issues that were caused by this uh, disease that uh, is what really made him uh, 7 foot 5, 500 pounds, and made him a giant and uh, allowed him to become this world famous wrestler. But uh, obviously, Hulkamania was running wild in 87. He had Bobby the Brain Heenan representing Andre, doing, uh, helping him cut some, some great promos. Um, I just don't think there's uh, anything like it, you know, and I don't mean to overhype WrestleMania 3, but I just feel like by far it's the most influential, it's the biggest drawing WrestleMania in terms of gate, uh, I'm not sure if it still stands the test of time when it comes to the biggest buy rate on pay-per-view, but um, it was just awesome, I mean I feel like if you're going to have one moment from wrestling history flash um, before you, bef when you die, that it's going to be Hulk and Andre, uh, you know, in, in that uh, stare down <laughs> as, as the 
the match begins at the Silver Dome. Either that or Hulk going for the uh, the slam on Andre. Uh, I mean, just an awesome fucking event. And one of the things that uh, that got us all into wrestling. Um, also, of course, you had Rowdy Rowdy Piper and Adrian Adonis in what was supposed to be a retirement match. Uh, the shenanigans there with uh, Adonis uh, getting um, getting his hair cut. It was pretty funny to watch. Uh, apparently, you know, we've since learned, I heard on a podcast a while back, that Rowdy Piper said Vince McMahon did not want him to star in John Carpenter's the They Live. He threatened him. He said that if he left to go work on in that movie, that uh, Vince basically said he would blackball him uh, Piper would never work in WWF again. I don't know what's with Vince's uh, jealousy, but uh, apparently uh, he claimed he could. He told Piper he'd get him in a bigger movie role or something that he didn't want him to take that role in They Live. Good for Piper that he did, and obviously uh, he did pretty well having uh, taken that role. Uh, made a lot of money, and people still talk about Roddy Piper today in that movie. Actually, one of my buddies got to meet Piper at a uh, horror uh, convention uh, in Indy a couple of years ago. Um, and he was there because, uh, you know, he had started in And They Live, which is a pretty pretty good movie, by the way. Uh, also, off the WrestleMania 3 card, man, who could forget that IC title match? Um, one of the greatest of all time. Uh Five-star match, more likely than not. Uh, been so influential to so many wrestlers. Chris Jericho said he used to just... He watched the match so many times that he memorized every move. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat. It was a classic. Instant classic. You had Junkyard Dog and uh, the King Harley race. Six-man tag between Hart Foundation and Danny Davis and the British Bulldogs. And Tito Santana. You also had Jake Roberts in the Honky Tonk Man uh, with uh, Jimmy Hart and Honky's Corner and Alice Cooper, uh, Detroit native, in the Jake the Snake's Corner, uh, Billy Jack Haynes and Hercules, um, Killer Bees in Sheik and Volkov. Um, I mean, yeah, just, just badass. Badass card. Rougeau Brothers and Greg uh, Valentine and Brutus Beefcake. Uh... Coco Beware was on this show as well. Hell, we even had a match with some midgets. Um, Can-Am connection against uh, Magnificent uh, Morocco and Cowboy Bob Orton. Uh, that was your card, but I really feel like that, again, it's the greatest. It's the best of all time. I don't understand how some people can have a number six on their list or number whatever, top ten. Got to be kidding yourself, folks. I mean, in terms of being influential, in terms of being uh, something that people will, will talk about for a long, long time, when they think of pro wrestling, it's WrestleMania three, and it's Hulk and Andre at the Silverdome um, in Detroit. I mean, I just don't think there's ever been a bigger show, and I don't know that there ever will be. So that's my uh, top WrestleMania of all time. Hulk, Hulk and Andre, uh, as well as Steamboat and Savage, uh, and Jake the Snake, Honky Tonk Man, at WrestleMania 3. Well, folks, uh, it's been fun. Uh, that's my top five WrestleManias of all time. Uh, as I said earlier, looking forward to Sunday's show. Uh, you know, I know there's been some people that... Uh, want to poo-poo the whole deal and they don't like it and what have you. They're not happy with the card. You know, this is really a pretty decent card compared to some other years we've had, like WrestleMania 27, uh, 29, even WrestleMania 25, the exception of Taker and Sean. It wasn't a very good card. Um, this year, I really feel like you got some good attractions, some good matches. Sting and Undertaker both coming back to do it one more time um, and have a WrestleMania moment. Uh, so I think it's going to be a big show. And as far as the uh, concern over Reigns and Lesnar, um, I've said my piece on that. I'm just looking forward to seeing what happens, what goes down now. Uh, I think that they'll deliver. Uh, they'll work hard to put on a good match. So no worries there. Um, but uh, 
reply. I'd like to hear your top uh, five WrestleManias and uh, why. Um, always enjoy talking about this sort of thing. This is definitely uh, one of my favorite times of the year. In fact, the first wrestling event I ever went to live uh, was as a nine-year-old kid. I went with my dad, and uh, we sat in the middle section at the Hoosier Dome uh, at WrestleMania 8, um, where you know Macho Man fought uh, Ric Flair for the world title, Sid Justice against Hulk Hogan with a surprise appearance by Ultimate Warrior at the end. Roddy Piper, Bret Hart for the Intercontinental title, Jake the Snake, and Undertaker. That was a really pretty solid WrestleMania, too. I'd put it in my top ten. Uh, superb title match between uh, Savage and Flair. Uh, really, it's one of my favorite title matches uh, from WrestleMania. Uh, not just because I was there, and it kind of has that sentimental, sentimental value for me, because I was there as a kid, and that's kind of right when I was getting into wrestling. But... Um, you know, it was just a great match, and the psychology was there, and you had the storyline with Ric Flair supposedly uh, whining and dining, uh, limousine riding, jet flying, uh, smooching, uh, chasing Liz and all that, all that nonsense. Uh, Mr. Perfect in, in his corner, and Bobby the Brain Heenan doing some really ornery commentary, and of course Macho Man uh, doing what he did best, and you know. There's another guy, it's, uh, he left us too early. You know, It would be good to see him go in the Hall of Fame uh, this Sunday. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's really all I have. So uh, I'd love to hear what your top uh, in WrestleManias are and what your, some, some of your favorite WrestleMania moments might be. All right. Later.